completed the development of our first product called Miser HKS, which is basically a retrofit version for heavy-duty vehicles that are already on the road. Uh, with that, we have proven 20% uh, plus fuel savings and emission reductions, and um, uh, we have several pilots on the road at the moment with some clients uh, in South Africa, currently busy with the HTS development. We expect, as shown in our simulation, um, at least a 60% um, increase in what we're achieving with HKS. So that's quite significant if you think of fuel saving and emission reduction in, in various applications. From an engineering concern, we are quite happy that we've proven that we understand this area and the area that we play in, we do that very well. It's a bunch of hydraulic, uh, a bunch of mechanical and uh, uh, mechatronic engineers with some really good uh, backup on the technical side. And we do our own designs, our own building, our own testing, um, our own commissioning, and effectively uh, we even developed the control system on our own, which for HKS was about a six-year period, um, pretty intense, and um, um, but very satisfied with where it ended up with. Our technology scales all the way from uh, 1,800 to a 300-ton truck, electric miser. So when we started this company, Norman and I, actually him being the de design engineer, the focus was more on how do we integrate hydraulics into heavy-duty vehicles to make sure they achieve the 20%, which has a return of investment of less than two years. We are achieving 19 months uh, before I looked at the new fuel price. Um, and uh, so I think in terms of the life, span of a heavy duty vehicle specifically in Africa but also in the world that's pretty attractive for the for the owner of the business and what we see in our HKS implementation is that if you're driving in the city you have a lot of region to break because you're stopping starting stopping starting so that's lovely but when you're on the highway you don't have that kind of thing so something like engine optimization starts to play a much bigger role and the percentages reverse a little bit and we still maintain more than 20 percent on a heavy duty vehicle when we're driving worldwide one of the most important pro, um, projects that we're currently working on is that we manufacture in biodiesel to supply to a client which is a leading international petroleum major in South Africa, which has a very huge footprint and a lot of um, retail um, fuel outlets. So we're required to supply 2.5 million liters in year one of the project, and it will be ramping up. So this project will be a five-year project, and by the fifth year, we'll be required to supply 15 million liters of biodiesel. So the image on the right-hand side is just a um, biodiesel production process that I'd like to take you over. So what we do is we collect or purchase waste cooking oil, and then we purify it by removing any form of waste or water which might be contained in the waste cooking oil. From there on, we heat the waste cooking oil, and then we mix methanol and a catalyst known as potassium hydroxide to form a um, solution known as the methoxide. We then mix the two. Um, before we actually mix it, we actually do heat the oil, and then we mix the methoxide into the oil, and we actually have formed two cracks where we act at the end of the mixture, um, at the end of the reaction, pardon me, we actually have biodiesel and glycerol. We can actually sell off the glycerol and we can actually use it to make various products such as soap or any form of um, other cosmetic products. We then take the um, biodiesel and we take it through a stage known as washing. So during the washing, we actually remove what we call what we call as soap. We do two forms of washing in our biodiesel production. We do wet washing where we actually use water to remove the soap and we also do dry washing where we use um, iron exchanges to actually remove any impurities that may be found in, the, found in the biodiesel. We then filter the biodiesel and we actually recently developed a new technology where we actually use um, ultrasonic waves to actually remove any form of residu residual water that may have been found after the washing process. And then we have biodiesel which we sell to various um, clients. So what do we need and what does our project entail? So our our project, we're required to actually deliver um, biodiesel to the client at two um, depots where they will actually be blending it to form um, B5 um, of diesel.